Hi, and welcome to Studio SN. My name is Sarah Newman, and today I want to show you a really cool technique for using ice resin with map paper. You can see my resin map right here on the front of my card. This portion right here is a piece of map paper that has been coated with ice resin front and back, and then layered up onto some papers so that you get the full effect of this sort of translucent um, technique. So the ice resin is going to take my map paper from being a regular piece of map paper into being something that is translucent that you can actually see through. And that also has um, a different texture to it. It feels almost like it's um, a plastic paper. So it makes it really sturdy and gives a completely different feel to it. It's a really easy technique to do. So a couple of the things that I'm going to need, first of all, of course, a piece of map paper. Now, this is actual paper paper, and that's um, a, a distinction that I think is really important because when you're picking up maps or you're looking for maps, um, there are two kinds you can find, the kind that are paper and the kind that come in these sort of travel guides that you pick up at the airport and train stations. These are really nice, but they're printed onto a glossy kind of magazine paper. This is not going to accept the ice resin nearly as well as a piece of porous paper. So the, the porous paper is really going to absorb that resin and give it that translucent effect. So this is definitely the kind that you want to, um, to look for. Garage sales and uh, used book sales are great for this kind of thing too, by the way. The next thing you're going to need, of course, is your ice resin. So whether you go for a little one ounce container or if you go for the, the bigger eight ounce bottles, whichever style you go for, you're going to need this a plastic um, measuring cup and a stir stick. And these are all available from the people at Ice Resin. You're also going to want to protect your work surface and I'm working with my craft sheet here. And then you'll want some latex gloves for your hands to protect those as well. I also like to keep a package of baby wipes on hand just to minimize any spills um, that might happen. But for the rest, it's really super easy. A little piece of sponge, is kitchen sponge, is gonna be our applicator. So that's easy to find and inexpensive. And for the process, it's super easy to do. I'm gonna go and mix up my ice resin and then we can get started. I want to show you how to mix up the ice resin and it's not hard because you'll have complete instructions, of course, but sometimes it's just easier when someone else shows you. So this is one way that you can buy the ice resin and you'll see it's a, a little um, syringe type of packaging on here and this will make up one ounce which is enough to fill one of these little uh, measuring cups. And that's about the, the unit that I work with for each of my ice resin sessions. So this is a really great way to go. It's also really nice, especially if you've never worked with ice resin before, because you do need to mix equal proportions of a part A and a part B, the resin and the hardener. And this is um, a plunger. So you're, you're gonna snap out the centerpiece, cut off the tips, and then just use a, the plunger to put um, the resin in equal proportions into your cup. So no measuring is even needed with something like this. So this is a great way to get started if you've never worked with the resin. Now the other way you can do it is with what I usually do, which is the eight ounce um, bottles. And you buy these together. So you have a part A and a part B, you've got the resin and the hardener, and then you will need to mix these, which is not difficult at all. But you do wanna make sure that you're mixing equal proportions. So that's what I'm gonna show you now. So I'm working onto my craft sheet and this is really ideal for working with resin um, because it can clean up pretty easily. I've also got my nice latex gloves on because you really don't wanna get this on your hands or on any other surface if you can possibly avoid it. If you do get a spill though, I've always got wet baby wipes and these are going to be very, very important and I always have a package and a couple of them out on my work surface when I'm working with resin. You're going to need your plastic measuring cup and your stir stick. Now these are also available um, from the ice resin people. So they have all of this stuff, um, the cup and the stir stick and the resin. Um, the craft sheet is from Ranger, of course. Okay, so I'm going to mix up one ounce of the, um, the resin. And you can see I've marked on here just because I thought it made it a little bit easier for you to see the, the lines on here. Because again, it's really important that you measure um, exactly. So I'm going to start with one half with my part A and then I'm going to top it up with part B. So 
let me get my part A here and I'm going to just simply start pouring. This is really thick. The part A is quite thick. So it's going to come out a little bit like syrup. So I'm just pouring this in here, working slowly until I get up to my half mark, halfway mark. And then put that out. And then you notice that there's kind of a drip on the side of this. This is where I go with my baby wipe and just clean up around the outside edge. That means when I put the cap on, uh, the next time I open this bottle, it's not glued shut. <laughs> Guess how I know this little trick. You live and you learn. So now I'm going to come in with my part B and I'm just going to top it up. And part B comes out a lot faster than part A, so that may be a little bit of a surprise. So just watch that when it comes out. And a little bit more. And then again, wipe off any excess, put the cap back on, and now I get to stir. I need to stir this really, really completely. And I usually hold it down onto my uh, work surface and then just sort of fold and wrap, fold and wrap um, the mixture. And when you're looking at it um, in person, you'll notice that there are what they call striations. Uh, kind of, it's kind of a stripey effect. You'll be able to see the two different parts as they're blending. So you really want to make sure that you mix this completely and get rid of all of those stripey bits. So I go around, I go right up close to the edge, kind of fold this in like um, cake batter, scrape down the sides, and you know it's pretty, the liquid is pretty close to the top, so you don't want to get too over enthusiastic but just fold and blend and fold and blend. You're going to do this for about two minutes. And that's the recommended amount of time from the ice resin people. So make sure that it is thoroughly, thoroughly mixed and then you will be ready to add it to your paper. I have my resin all mixed up and my map paper out so I'm ready to add my resin to my paper. So again, working on my craft sheet, and then I'm just going to um, scrape this off of my stir stick and just set this aside, and I can set it directly onto my craft sheet. That won't hurt it. And I'm working with a little piece of kitchen sponge. This is going to be my applicator. Um, I took a regular size kitchen sponge, the kind that you get at the, at the drugstore, the grocery store, and just cut it down into little two-inch pieces. This is as big as I need. And simply holding down my map, I'm going to apply the resin. Now, if you're noticing on your resin that you have some air bubbles in here, don't worry about it because those will dissipate as you put the resin onto your paper. So I'm just going to dab this in here. Don't dunk it in. You don't need to soak it. But just get a little bit on there and then starting from the center of your paper, work out toward the edges. And the reason you want to start in the center is because if you start on the edges, you can tend to get it, you know, going, getting excess uh, resin onto your craft sheet. So you don't need that. A little bit goes a long way. And resist the urge to simply pour the resin onto your paper because porous paper will just suck up that resin and you'll end up using a lot more of it than you actually need to. So if you want a really thick, um, layer of resin, what I tend to do is um, do one coating of it, let it dry, and then come back and add more. So you can certainly make your paper as thick as you want it to be, but I would advise not directly pouring your resin onto your, onto your paper because it does tend to just sort of soak it up and then it kind of can go everywhere as well. So this is a, a little bit thriftier method. I'm going to turn this around and again, I'm just holding it down with one gloved hand and making sure to get out to the edges. And I think you can already see on here where this is turning a darker color. And this also helps you to see where you've already added the resin and where you need to add a little bit more. If you have any little tears in your paper, just go right over those tears along the edges or notches. Okay, so now I've got the front of my paper all resin 
flip it over and you can see on the back where some of this is starting to come through and then just go and do a second application and again just continuing with the same little piece of sponge you are going to need to discard the the cup and the stir stick um, when you're done and the sponge and the the gloves too of course the craft sheet you can um, use a, an old hotel key card or an old credit card to scrape off any dried on resin so you can always reuse your your craft sheet for this technique so here we go I've got it almost done on here and I can already start to see some from the front of my map paper showing through onto this reverse side now my craft sheet does have a slight texture to it and I'm going to want to keep that in mind whichever side I want to be the front of my paper that's the side that I'm going to have drying face up so if I want this to be my front I'm just going to flip this over again take a look and make sure that you've got all of the areas covered on here but I'm going to flip this this way and this will be my um, the front side of my paper so that way I know that I don't have any um, little texture from my craft sheet you can also work on a plastic garbage bag that works as well and then you will have even more of a texture so just something to keep in mind if you don't have a craft sheet um, handy or one that you can use for this that that's um, also an option for you too so then just take a look make sure you've got all of the areas on here covered as much as you want and then you'll just go ahead and let this dry now here's my completed dried ice resin piece of map paper and I just need to pull it up off of my craft sheet and then it's ready to use so you can probably hear actually that um, it's got a bit of a plasticky sort of texture to it it's really sturdy but it can still be hole punched it can even be torn so that's just with one coating of the resin on it you can still do those things the more layers of resin that you would add to your paper of course um, the thicker it becomes so do keep that in mind but for now it's really flexible and it's really easy to use so let me bring in a little cut piece of it you can also cut this with your paper trimmer too so um, if you've got even one of those sliding or guillotine style of paper trimmer those will be able to cut this so I've simply cut down a piece of my map paper and you can see um, probably see my hand under here um, both sides of the map are going to be visible so I'm going to put this onto a piece of white paper just so that you can see how that shows through and that will make it a lot more um, apparent the translucency of it so what I've done is simply layered it onto a piece of white cardstock and I stapled it um, on two corners. So staples are a really good way to, to attach your resin piece onto another paper. I left this corner up so that I could show you that I put a little piece of text paper on here. It's going to be really hard for you to see it on your screen, but in person you would be able to read some of that text through the translucency of the map paper. Now to hold down this corner, I use um, Zots. <laughs> These are little flat uh, translucent clear dots, super sticky dots. You can probably hardly see it on my finger. Um, you just need to tack that down onto your resin paper and then smooth it down. And it holds it and you won't see the, the Zot through there. So they're kind of magical for um, holding your resin paper onto another type of paper. It's what I use for all of my layering with these. I simply put this down onto my card front and I tried to keep the rest of the card pretty simple because I really wanted this to be the spotlight. So I have a little torn piece of book paper here, a strip of red cardstock going across here, my map paper that's been matted, and then this stamped sentiment. And this is um, a really fun stamp that I have from Inka Dinkadoo and I think I've had this for years and years. And it must be a popular one because I've seen this a lot in magazines too. So it's one of my favorite stamps and I think it goes really nicely with the map paper on here. Three little brads added down here onto the front of the card and then I've got my completed layout. So this is how to use ice resin with map paper. I hope you enjoyed the segment today. For more ideas and inspiration, please do stop by my website at sarahnewman.com. Thanks so much for watching and I will catch you next time.